In this video, we're gonna cover all the basics of an electrical panel. We'll talk about all the different components that go into this, as well as basic safety precautions, the things that you need to understand if you're planning on doing any electrical work on your own, as well as understanding whether or not this is a job you can tackle yourself, or if it's something you should leave to the professionals. Before we remove the screws to take the panel cover off, it's important to shut off the main breaker. That's going to shut off power to the majority of the inside of this box. However, it's not going to eliminate all the power coming in. The only way you can eliminate power coming into this entire box is to call the electrical company and have them remove the meter. But in lieu of that, the next best thing is to shut off the main because that's going to minimize the amount of electricity that's flowing through this panel inside. Before we get into the electrical panel, it's also important to have the right safety gear. So make sure you have some safety glasses, make sure you have some gloves, make sure you're wearing some thick rubber shoes and not something like flip-flops or Crocs or even worse, barefoot. You wanna make sure that there's isolation between you and the ground. So that way, if you touch the wrong thing, there's a less likely chance of the electricity flowing through your body. You also wanna make sure you're using insulated tools. Uh, this is one tool that I like to use. This is called the Volt Claw. So this helps you move wires around inside of a panel or inside of an electrical box without actually having to touch them. So this is a great addition to have to your toolbox. As far as other tools you might need, make sure you have a multimeter. This can help you diagnose any potential problems that you're finding. I also personally like to have a non-contact voltage detector just to use as an additional check. Ideally, you should also be wearing protective clothing. Never ever work in wet conditions and always have adequate lighting with either a flashlight or some auxiliary lights that run off the battery. You also shouldn't have any jewelry on or be wearing any other types of metal objects. Also, never touch the panel with both hands because if you do that and it short circuits, then that electricity is going to flow through your chest, which is really bad. So always work with one hand only in the panel. And it's always a good idea to not be working alone. So that way, in case something really bad happens, you have someone else there that can help you. Hey, are you a professional or do you consider yourself an expert in the home improvement space? If so, I wanna let you know there's a huge opportunity right now to create content, just like the content you're seeing and put videos out on YouTube to help people that are looking to have help. Now, the unfortunate thing is there's a lot of creators on YouTube in the home improvement space that aren't true professionals. The reason they're successful in that is because the demand's not being met by those true experts that have been in the trades or in the industry for a long, long time. So if you think you can create better content than what you're watching right now, or maybe some other creators that you've seen, or if you think you can provide additional value that you haven't seen anybody else cover, then I highly encourage you to check out the description below in the video for some additional information that I think you'll find very helpful. Otherwise, for everybody else, thanks for listening to me sponsor my own video. Let's get back to the content. If you don't feel comfortable or qualified enough to handle electrical projects on your own home, no matter what capacity it is, then by all means, don't do it. Make sure to prioritize your safety and contact a licensed electrician. Also be sure to check any codes in your area to make sure that if you are tackling a home electrical project, that it is compliant with your local regulations. Now that said, I also believe knowledge is power, which is why I'm making this video. All right, so first things first, let's do a quick recap. These are all the breakers for your house. Each breaker should correspond to a separate circuit. This is the main breaker for your electrical panel, so you wanna make sure to flip this off before you do any work inside of the breaker panel itself. Your panel should also have some information on a label that should tell you the manufacturer of the panel, which is really important if you have to replace or add any circuit breakers to the electrical panel. Every panel should also have an index that corresponds to every circuit breaker that's in your box. Make sure you review this, make sure it's readable and make sure it's accurate. All right, so let's open this up and take a look inside. So first things first, we need to shut off the main. Get all the power to the house. And remember that doesn't shut off all the power to the panel, but it does shut off the majority of it. Okay, so now that the cover's off, we can see inside. And uh, I'm going to show you where the power is coming in, first of all. So. So you've got this main circuit breaker at the top and then you've got these two big wires coming in at the top and attached with these two lugs. That is where the power is coming into your panel. So if you don't have your meter removed by the electrical company, then that's still going to be hot, it's still going to be live. So don't ever, whatever you do, don't ever touch that. Now, since we shut off the main breaker before we took the panel off, the rest of the circuit breakers should not have power coming to them anymore. But in order to test that, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and power up this non-contact voltage tester and make sure I'm just gonna run this along these here. And if there was any power, this would be beeping right now, and it's not. You can see this side, it's the same thing. Now, if I get this close to the lugs, you can see that's indicating that's still hot. 
So in addition to the main breaker, the service lugs, and the circuit breakers themselves, there's a couple things I want to point out. So you've got this metal bus bar in the back here, and that distributes the power to all these circuit breakers. So these circuit breakers actually click into place on this metal bar. That's how they get the power, and then that's how they end up distributing the power through all the wires that run through the rest of the house. You've also got these silver bus bars on the outside here. These are the neutral bus bars, so all the white neutral wires connect into these, and sometimes the ground wires can connect into these also. You can also have a ground bus bar where the grounds can connect to, and those are usually attached to the box itself. So those are important to be aware of. If you start to expand your electrical panel, you may have to add a ground bus bar and then move your copper ground wires over to it to free up some spaces on your neutral bus bar so you can add some additional neutral wires and add additional circuit breakers. Something else to point out is that you should only have one neutral wire underneath every terminal screw. If you have more than that, then that's usually a code violation. But on the flip side, you can have multiple ground wires underneath one terminal screw. Let me show you how a breaker connects in. It just rocks into the panel and connects to that power bus in the back here. It's got a clip on the back that actually clips into that bus. And then this is just like a little uh, clip here that helps hold the breaker in place. So if you're installing an additional breaker, you just have to slide this into the bar and then rock this into place and then the connection's made. Now when you're adding an additional circuit breaker, the only wire that's really hooked up to these typically is the black or the hot wire that goes into the circuit breaker itself. The only exception to that is going to be a safety breaker that needs additional protection. So with those, you'll typically have a white neutral wire running off of those as well. So that's going to include anything from a GFCI breaker to AFCI and even DFCI breakers. Um, those are also going to have those white, usually a pigtail wire that will need to be connected to your neutral bus bar. If you ever have to replace a circuit breaker, make sure you're replacing the same amperage um, because this is going to correspond to the wiring that's in the wall for that circuit. So you don't ever, for example, you don't ever want to replace a 15 amp breaker with a 20 amp breaker because that's not going to give you the protection that you need. And that's at the minimum is going to be a violation of code. And at worst, it's going to be a fire hazard. It could really start a fire in your house. So always pay attention to that. But of course, you could always replace a standard breaker with something that has a little bit more protection to it, say a GFCI or AFCI breaker. Um, make sure though that you still stick to that same amperage rating. I also want to point out it's important to have proper cable management. So all the wiring that comes into your box should be routed around the outside of the box itself. And then it should be coming over at a 90 degree angle to either the neutral bus bars or to the breakers themselves if it's the hot wires. And even if it's the ground wires, everything should be nice and neat and organized and not a jumbled mess. It's gonna make everything a lot easier to work on in the future and also safer too. And if you find any unforeseen issues in your electrical panel after you open it up, it's best to just go ahead and take care of those right away. When you're putting the panel cover back on, usually these have some springs inside of it to help everything float around the circuit breakers. Um, make sure that you have this in alignment before you start to tighten down the screws. Also, if you're adding any circuits to the house and you installed a breaker, make sure you remove the cover to, for that circuit breaker because otherwise you're going to have some, some problems trying to put this back in place when this is pushing on the front of the circuit breaker. Another thing you should also keep in mind too is if you accidentally remove one of these or if one of these is missing and there isn't a circuit breaker behind it, Either replace this with another cover or install a circuit breaker that isn't connected to anything to help fill that gap. It just adds another level of protection so that way if you have to get into this to turn on and off breakers, you're not going to accidentally get inside of it and electrocute yourself. There we go. All right, that's it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and also check out this other video here. I'm sure you'll like it too. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.